Hello, everyone. We hope you enjoyed the documentary and how Earth Observation has and is changing the world. My name is Albert, and I'm a climate security analyst working on environmental peace building at the United Nations Environment Programme. Hi, everyone. My name is Marie, and I am the coordinator of Strata, a geospatial data platform around climate security, also being developed at UNEP, uh, and I'm a colleague of Albert's. And we would like to share some thoughts and examples on how the technologies shown uh, in the documentary are used within our field uh, and so within the field of climate change security. We would like to briefly introduce a few data and digital governance points as well. In the film, with so many applications of Earth observation technologies, including satellites, drone and remote sensors, a key observation to highlight is that actually Earth observation is, is just um, used in plenty of cases, but to put this into perspective, the reality is that Earth observation is just a part of a whole digital ecosystem. Um, and this ecosystem actually has a very wide range of technologies which can be used for, for climate action. Um, nowadays, big data and digital technologies continue growing and also their applications. So it's therefore in our hands to leverage these technologies for env environmental conservation, climate peace and security, and sustainable development. As a first example, we would like to touch upon the GPS system that was introduced as well in the documentary. They are not only important for navigation purposes, but also for safety and for environmental impacts. For example, colleagues in the UN verification mission in Colombia, they have recently implemented a GPS system to track the vehicles of the mission. And that way they can actually stimulate more efficient fuel consumption and reduce also speeding. And uh, they do that to increase the awareness on environmental issues and also safety within and outside of the mission. So as a second case, um, we want to talk about the greenhouse gas emissions monitoring. An interesting case uh, from the documentary was the use of drones to capture greenhouse gas emissions in a forest in Saxony in, in Germany. So actually, satellite technology has advanced extremely fast and some experiments are now being carried out to capture emissions from satellite imagery. If this technology can be scaled up, it could allow the monitoring of greenhouse gas emissions globally and in real time. This, of course, has many potential uses for governance, reporting, and even enforcement. For instance, um, that could help monitoring multilateral environmental agreements, national determined contributions, and even gas emissions cap and trade systems. In our work for climate and environmental security, rely, we rely a lot on future projections of important climate, but also socioeconomic indicators. And these projections build a lot on Earth observation data, mainly for the evaluation of the models used. So they also need consistent data covering the whole globe. And we know that on the ground monitoring, so more local monitoring of, for example, population numbers or the weather is not uh, similarly available everywhere or as high resolution or quality everywhere. So Earth observation, uh, for example, of nightlight emissions or of, of building infrastructure uh, in settlements really improves the estimates of population numbers. And another example, Earth observation of atmospheric uh, layers really improves the estimates of, of climate data that is then needed to improve the socioeconomic and climate uh, projections. So an interesting case from the film was the use of, uh, the use of satellites to monitor the deforest, deforestation in the Amazon forest. We use a similar approach in Afghanistan where we use exactly that satellite imagery to capture forest loss and, priori and prioritize project implementation areas. For instance, um, the picture that you can see now, that's uh, northern Afghanistan, that's Bamiyan. Um, and you can see that at that time, it was really full of vegetation and the, 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 like the, the valleys were covering grass and there were some trees um, here and there. Over the time when, well, through like, like a, an unsustainable use of these resources, this grass and forest was little by little getting um, taken down, either for grass grazing of livestock, but also for, for charcoal. And here is the result after only 25 years of how the, the same area in Bamiyan went from full, fully covered to almost being uh, without any tree at all. So by, 
by using satellite imagery, we would be able, we were able to to see the, the difference in like how much land, how, how much um, forest was lost in these 25 years. On the left, you can see how that actually there was plenty of forest on the valleys, and then 25 years afterwards, um, it was like almost nothing. So as I said, this is what helped us to um, decide where were the areas in which we should start implementing annual projects of reforestation and how can that as well be helped um, not only for adaptation um, against like disasters because what happened is that since there were not um, there were not forests there were not any kind of grass landslides and, and floods were very common so what we did with our project was helping the local population to build these terraces and to reforest the areas in order to prevent disasters, but also help with um, social cohesion and, and trust building with the activities. Next to forest monitoring, UNEP is also involved in water and uh, drought monitoring from space. So together with the European Commission's Joint Research Center and Google Earth Engine, UNEP developed the SDG 6661 app. So that's a surface water viewer that shows changes in global water extent and water-related ecosystems based on satellite images and artificial intelligence. So this data is currently being used as a globally consistent baseline for SDG indicator 6.6.1, and it tracks the changes in the extent of water-related ecosystems over time. And UNEP is the official custodian of this data set, and it offers a quality control. So those were a little bit of the cases that we're working in and that we have been working in the past. In the past. We're also trying to bring UNEP into the digital age. So to achieve our mandate at UNEP, we are working in different environmental data and digital dimensions. For instance, a task force was established to support the digital transformation of UNEP across all of the divisions. But we're also developing different digital platforms to keep our environment under review and the most prominent cases being Weser, GEMS, Strata, and MAPEX. Now, some of our work also includes advancing environmental data and digital governance. So through the example of, through example of security and privacy, the document made a point that the speed of development of new technologies doesn't really match the development of policy. This is a major gap at the moment, which results in serious issues such as the um, digital power monopolies or increasing inequality gaps, especially through like digital literacy. So against this, in UNEP, we are advocating for the establishment of a framework of environmental digital public goods. We're also advocating for the integration of environmental data in all systems to the very beginning in the conceptualization. And also, we're advocating for enhancing environmental data availability discoverability and usability. To put this into perspective, it's important to mention that currently um, we, have, we have 93 environmental indicators uh, for the SDGs, but there is a lack of environmental data to measure 63 out of the 93. This means that we have 68%, 68% of uh, indicators that we cannot yet measure. Uh, also, there are plenty of major initiatives in terms of data and digital governance, both at the UN, but also elsewhere, that are emerging, especially from international organizations and, and, the, and the European Union being one of the major contributors. So to follow up on a couple of more uh, challenges in this field, first of all, we need to set and implement quality standards to increase the trust in the data and to ensure interoperability between different data sources. And often this data is created through public-private partnerships, and we also really need to safeguard that um, that the that these public and private partnerships can maintain public trust and and avoid conflicts of interest and 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 profit uh, building from public uh, funding sources. Similarly, we also need to ensure uh, responsible use after all, afterwards of these publicly available environmental data. So again, there we need standards on transparency and availability of derivative products. Um, and lastly, another challenge is that digital capacity varies a lot between organizations and between different regions globally. And uh, it mainly depends on having expertise available, but also equipment available. And without those two, 
it can be very difficult to access and to use uh, digital public goods effectively. So this can often also complicate cooperation between different partners and stakeholders, uh, but most importantly, it can result in the exclusion of underrepresented unrepre under groups. So they might not have the technical capacity or expertise to engage in these, in these initiatives. And that is, um, the main reason why we at the environmental security unit started to develop strata so we wanted to create an easy to use geospatial platform for non-technical users to assess climate related security risks and uh, we plan to have a pilot ready for somalia by january 2022 so this is a little uh, sneak peek and work in progress thank you thank you very much for your attention um, we hope we were able to sketch how Earth observation is important to our work on climate security at UNEP and also on peace building and offer some ideas of what is going on in terms of uh, the governance of the data and digital sphere. So feel free to contact us with any questions you might have. Uh, we'll be very glad to, to answer them. Thank you again.